Hi everybody, um, apologies for the delay since the last instalment of Sodor Appreciation Society videos. Um, that's due to health condition on my part, but I'm fit and raring to go now. Um, in the last instalment we talked about how we were going to build one of these Sodor breakdown cranes. Ignore the fact it hasn't got a roof, I'll explain that later. How we're going to make one of them, um, or show you how we make one of them, and it was going to be offered up as a prize for a competition that Sodor will run in the next few months. So, without further ado, today's instalment is going to be about making the jib runner wagon. This is just a flat wagon that supports the jib when they're going out to a derailment or a work site. So, the main component of this is one of the Hornby four wheel coaches that you see plenty of, still made today, uh, slightly overscaled but it'll be perfectly fine for what we want. So, first things first. We'll remove the wheels. So, just a bit of pulling and pushing to remove the wheel sets. You can see, because we'll need them later on. These are perfectly good. They're some of the older types. Plastic inners with metal outer tires. But they're perfectly fine for what we want. The next stage is to remove the body. Um, from the chassis. Now you may be able to do that just by squeezing the ends and lifting the chassis away like that and we can put the body to one side. As you can see inside we have got the weight that keeps the wagon on the track. Now it's important that we keep that, we don't want to uh, lose that so make sure that you keep that and keep it safe. So first things after separating the body on the wagons we have these footboards down below. These would be used at some stations for passengers to step onto to get into the coach, but we don't need them. So we're going to take the weight out and with a sharp Stanley knife we're just going to trim the edges of those footsteps. Now there isn't really a perfect technique for doing this. One way I have found to do this, but again this won't suit everybody, is to put a thin ruler up against the axle box. You can see the small axle box there underneath the footstep. Well, I put a thin steel ruler alongside that. I'm keeping my fingers out of the way. See, it's a very delicate job. I score the plastic with a brand new sharp blade do not use an old blade. New sharp blade will get the job done much more quicker and safer. And there you can see we've made some score marks. It's only very light but you may be able to see it. There's a score mark down the edge of the step. So what I can do now, I can take the ruler away and just run the knife, keeping my fingers away from the tip of the blade, I can just run the blade down the plastic step and you see it's cut through already That's the, uh, what having a nice sharp blade does for you and now you can see if you look along the edge of the wagon the sides of the wagon and the sides of the step are now flush this will make it easier to glue our sole bar onto our flat wagon So. I'll do the same with the other side, hopefully. Again, keeping my fingers away and using the nice new sharp blade to score a mark in it. Two or three strokes should do it. And then keeping my fingers well away again, I can score freehand. There you go, look at that. It's cut through it. Minimum effort, minimum fuss. Now, I would normally have, but I appear to have forgotten today, uh, a nail file. I don't. It's not particularly important because the blade has given us such a nice fine cut. But you can always get a nail file uh, out of your wife or your girlfriend or your daughter's um, makeup box and just run it down the edge to give you a nice smooth surface. Now, we come over here to the selection of pre-cut laser cut pieces for the wagons. Um, the, the components I will need for the flat wagon 
are this main rectangular block and these two side pieces. Now you'll notice that there is some slight, they're not burn marks, it's just more marks from the smoke where they come out of the laser cutter. The other side you can see it's perfectly clear and there's nothing wrong with that. Again a nail file will remove that. So first things first, we will glue our weight in. Now this is the weight we said to keep to one side that was so important. So just put it back in to make sure it goes in. Um, there might be, some of them may have to go in a certain way round. Some may have to fit a particular way. And and I can't get any super glue out. Um, so yes, we'll put a drop of super glue onto the chassis of the wagon, just where the weight will sit. So. We put a drop of super glue onto the chassis, two drops of glue, and place the weight carefully. This was another reason for taking the wheels out, because glue has a tendency to get in all sorts of awkward areas that you don't want glue to get, and one would be including the axle boxes that would glue the wheels in, which is never good. So now we've got our um, weight in, so that's suitably weighted down and ready for the rest of the wagon to be built around it. Now we come to our wagon top. This is slightly larger than the uh, size of the chassis and I'm going to put this with the scorch mark side up because the other side is perfectly flat. There's no lumps or bumps where it's been through the laser cutter so I know that when I put some glue around the chassis this will make a perfect fit onto it. So the next step, the next step is to put several glue marks around the perimeter of the wagon chassis. You don't need to necessarily put it all the way around, just in a few places where it will hold it down. Now the secret is to Place the wagon so that it is as in the centre as possible. Now there should be a slight overhang of about a millimetre, millimetre and a half either side, as you can see there. I think I've roughly got that. Right, there you go, you can see there's about a millimetre and a half there, millimetre and a half there. And just keep that pressed down for 10, 15, 20 seconds just to make sure the glue bonds. I think that's got it. That's quite secure. And now that this side, the upper side has been left rough, you'll be able to go over it with your nail file or a piece of sandpaper and just smooth it down. So next step, these are the two wagon sides. And these are going to, again, be put with the flat side or the perfectly formed side inside so that it, again, makes a good contact with all the surfaces and you can see there that fits in lovely above the step excellent so again I'll put some glue around the edge to pierce the hole again see it's coming out quite a lot now it's from one extreme to the other I put a few drops on what used to be the step. It's actually come out quite considerably that time. And again, hold that on. Make sure you line it up perfectly with the decking that you've just previously put on. Make sure you don't glue your fingers. It's never fun trying to peel super glue off your fingers. And there we go, we've got the side. Again, the burn marks and any roughness can be sanded off as appropriate. So finally, just put some glue on. Put some glue on the old step. And again, line it up, flat side or the um, unburnt side if you like 
side up against the side of the wagon, press it down and hold it. There we go. And if you do uh, have any loose spots, it's always possible just to put a dab of glue in from the inside of the wagon just to add any reinforcement that you need. And we'll leave that to dry for a few seconds. Now, a few weeks ago, uh, one of the um, updates I put on the Sodor Appreciation Society website was about breakdown cranes. And there were some pictures of the models used in the TV series. So you can go back and compare the real genuine models used in the TV series to the ones that we've created here. Now, although they're not an absolute 100% replica, they're, in my mind, 95% and I'm happy with that. They look perfectly good with Thomas or James pulling them round. The last stage for today's instalment is to just slot the wheels back in, make sure we're happy that they can still roll freely. There's always one that difficult to get in. There we go. Yeah, and as you can see, both wheel sets roll quite happily. Um, so, in the next instalment, once I've sanded any roughness down, we will be to add some uh, detail into the decking. I will add some wooden bracing, uh, maybe some details of the sort of things that they would have on a breakdown crane, and also make a start on the crane itself, um, the jib, showing you how we go about making that. But for today, that is the instalment. That is how we make the jib runner. You can see it's about five, 10 minutes work. Um, and we're halfway there to making um, a good interpretation of the Sodor Breakdown Crane. So tune in for next time uh, and see how we build the rest of it. See you later.